Thank you for watching this video from Kingsway Soft. Today I will be introducing the male components from within the SSIS Productivity Pack. The SSIS Productivity Pack is a collection of premium SSIS components which enable greater developer productivity and increases the power of SSIS. Using our mail components, we can easily send or retrieve emails in an individual or batched fashion within SSIS. As of this recording, the SSIS Productivity Pack offers five mail components, SMTP Connection Manager, SMTP Task, SMTP Destination Component, Email Connection Manager, and Email Source Component. The SMTP Connection Manager is used to establish connections to an SMTP server. The SMTP task is used to send the emails. Similar to the SMTP task, the SMTP destination component also sends emails but within a data flow using column data. The Email Connection Manager facilitates connections to an email server for the purpose of reading email. The email source component is used to read or receive emails from a POP3, IMAP, or Exchange server and sends the output data to downstream pipeline components within the data flow. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will begin with the SMTP components first, followed by the other email components. I will create an SMTP connection manager. Both the SMTP task and SMTP destination component require the SMTP Connection Manager to be established. Right-click on the Connection Manager area down below to add a new connection. Select the SMTP item to add this new Connection Manager. We are now prompted to enter the connection information to the SMTP server, starting with the SMTP server URL and port number. We also have the option to enable SSL encryption when connecting to the server. The next part asks us to specify our authentication information. Lastly, the timeout option can specify a timeout value in seconds for the connection. This is defaulted to 120 seconds. Click OK to finish configuring the SMTP Connection Manager. Please note that the Connection Manager that we just created is a package level Connection Manager. For SSIS 2012 or later, you can create project-level connection managers if you right-click the Connection Managers node within the Solution Explorer. Next, we will drag the SMTP task from the SSIS toolbox to the Control Flow Design surface. Double-click it to open its editor form. We will first select an SMTP Connection Manager. Next, the sender and recipient settings are pretty straightforward, detailing from where this email comes from and to where this email is sent. Note that all fields on the form can be dynamically driven by SSIS variables using the SSIS expression capabilities. We can now navigate to the content page where we specify the content of the email. We are required to specify the email's subject. For the priority setting, there are three options we can choose from, low, normal, and high. The encoding option will automatically default to the user's window regional settings. The body text box is where we can input the body of our email. We can also launch the advanced editor where we can design and preview the body in HTML. We can also merge variable values here. On the bottom of the body text box are three viewing mode options, WYSIWYG, HTML, and a preview mode. Going to the attachments page, we can add and remove attachments using the buttons on the right. Note that the name field must include the file extension. The last page for the SMTP task is the error handling page, where we can choose to continue on error. If this is enabled, a warning will be fired when an error occurs while the package execution continues. We can click OK to finish configuring the SMTP task. Right-click the component to execute the task. Going back to the control flow view, I will now add a data flow task 
for the purpose of showing you the SMTP destination component. Note that the SMTP destination component and the SMTP task are very similar in their functioning. However, the SMTP destination component uses column data. For our example, we will map column data from upstream data flow components. In our case, we are using data generated by our data spawner. We will also be using our premium derived column component to import file contents to be used as email attachments. I will quickly configure these two components. Now that we've configured our column data via the data spawner and premium derived column components, let's connect to an SMTP destination component. The general page allows us to configure general email settings by mapping input columns to an email setting. We will first select an SMTP connection manager. The sender, recipient, and content settings are pretty straightforward. These columns will represent their applicable fields in the email. The next three fields is body HTML, priority, and encoding are important to note. When mapping the input columns for the is body HTML option, the input data of the chosen column should be a Boolean value. For the priority input column, the input value should be one of the following three values, low, normal, or high. The encoding should be either the code page value in numerical format or the .NET name in string format. The list of code page identifiers is available in our online help manual page. Now we can navigate to the attachments page where we can map the input columns to an attachment setting. You can add and remove using the buttons on the right. Lastly, we can configure how to handle errors in the error handling page where there are three error handling mechanisms to choose from. The default option is fail on error where the entire data flow will fail as soon as an error occurs. There's also the redirect rows to error output where the error output will contain the failed records with extra columns, error code, error column, and error message. There is also a third option, which is to ignore any errors that may have occurred. We can now click OK to finish configuring the SMTP destination component and execute the task. We will now demonstrate some of the other email components, starting with the Email Connection Manager. As mentioned before, the Email Connection Manager can be used to establish connections to an email server for the purpose of reading or receiving emails. Right-click on the Connection Manager area down below to add a new connection. Select the email item to add this new connection manager. The first area of the form asks us to specify the protocol of the email server. There are three supported options, POP3, IMAP, and Exchange Web Services. Next, you can specify the address of the email server in the host name field. There are three SSL modes to select when connecting to the server, none, implicit, and explicit. The next part asks us to specify our authentication information starting with the port number. Note that in the advanced settings, there is an optional proxy server setting, in the case where a proxy may be required. We also have a timeout option in which you can specify the timeout in milliseconds to use when attempting to connect to the server. Now let's drag the email source component from the SSIS toolbox to the design surface. Double click to open its editor form. The email source component is used to read or receive emails from a server and output them to columns. Let's specify an email connection manager. Next, the folder path determines which folder on the server emails will be retrieved from. Note that this option cannot be used with POP3 server because they do not support folders. There is an option to include subfolders. You can specify to only process unread messages. The read process IDs from variable option is only available with a POP3 server. 
you can specify to mark unread messages as read. The write process IDs to variable option is also only available with a POP3 server. Search parameters can be entered to filter the messages being retrieved. This option is only applicable when it is an IMAP or Exchange connection. Navigating to the columns page, we will find a list of available fields to read from. Let's click OK to finish configuring this component. The email component supports two outputs, primary output and secondary output. The primary output includes the column selected. The secondary output will include any attachments that correspond to the messages retrieved for primary output. There are three columns for the secondary output message ID, file name, and attachment content. We can now execute the task. This concludes a demonstration of the mail components within our SSIS productivity pack. There are many other components in the SSIS productivity pack that enable developers to accomplish more in SSIS in a much more productive fashion. Please feel free to take a look at our other videos available for viewing on our website or YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video. For any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us.